Hello, I'm Suk Nam Kung. I'm a radiologist and member of Han Maom Church in Chuncheon. There's a memory that I still clearly remember when I was around four or five years old. I was staring at the stars thinking, it's so hard to live every day. I can't imagine myself living long enough to be a grandmother. And I started crying. This thought filled my head for over 30 years. But I started to live an unimaginably happy life through Christ who rose from the dead. And today, I would like to share my testimony. I was born the youngest of five siblings. As a kid, when my parents went out for work, I had to spend the day with my grandparents, but they constantly fought throughout the day. And at night, I had to deal with a drunken father. I would fall asleep with my parents in their room. I guess it was so hard for my mom to bear it that she kept me in their room as she held me tightly in her arms. So I had to see and go through everything with her. Sometimes, when I heard my father's footsteps, I would run to the backyard or closet to hide. It was hard for me to bear the cold winter, but I was so afraid that something would happen to my mom. All these things came to me as a great shock and left me wounded and scarred. Once, when I was in middle school, I was running away from my father and had decided to go to my sister's house. However, I was kidnapped by a motorcyclist on my way there. I managed to jump off the motorcycle when the timing seemed right. I tumbled onto the ground, but I got up quickly and ran as fast as I could. As the motorcycle reversed course and started to come toward me, I began to panic. A lady in the neighborhood heard me screaming and quickly got me inside her home. I was blue and trembling from head to toe, and my leg was bleeding. It wasn't like I was molested, but I felt so ashamed and miserable. In addition to that incident, I had many other difficult things happen, like getting hit by a bicycle and breaking my front tooth, almost drowning to death, and running into a mugger at night who hit me and stole my purse. As things like these kept happening, I always felt anxious and I became pessimistic and cynical about everything. Even from a very young age, I always thought that it was my fate to live an unhappy and unlucky life. I was so lonely and helpless, and I just wanted to die. I didn't have anything to look forward to and spent each day meaninglessly. Others didn't know about my true feelings because I was always optimistic and cheerful in front of them. When I was a senior in high school, I didn't know what to study after I graduated or what university I should go to. My teacher used to say, will you even be able to make it into a university? And she was worried about me. But surprisingly, I got a really good score on my university entrance exam, and my teacher advised me to go to medical school. Okay. So, without putting any thought into it, I went to medical school. But medical school was much harder than I'd ever imagined. I thought that in college, I would go to classes for a few hours, then have free time for the rest of the day. But in medical school, I felt like you had to give up being a human in order to survive. My schedule was packed with lectures and labs. I had more work than when I was a senior in high school, and every class was difficult. Every day, I would spend all my waking hours in class, then in the library. If you got an F on one class, you had to take all of your classes over again the following semester. If you were held back for two years in a row, you were kicked out. With such high intensity, anxiety, and stress, some students dropped out even before they completed their first year. Some students developed severe anxiety disorders and would wander. I wasn't expecting university to be so hard for me, so I started to feel depressed and empty. I tried to release the stress by drinking two bottles of soju and 2,000 cc's of beer in one sitting. After I finished medical school, I began interning at a hospital. The internship was even harder than medical school. I was so busy that I only slept two to three hours per day and had no days off. Oftentimes, I was called into work at night, too. When I watched TV, I hated seeing TV shows about hospitals. <laughs> the doctors in those shows were always so well-groomed and handsome, and they could answer every phone call their girlfriends ever made. They would even throw off their gowns and leave work to go see them. <laughs> but in reality, most interns and new residents have such irregular schedules that they don't eat properly and don't have time to exercise. So they get double chins and pot bellies, their skin sags, and their eyes are glazed over with fatigue. 
On top of everything that I was going through that year, I also suffered from having a phone stalker. Later, my heart would drop and my head would go blank every time I heard the phone ring. So being in a hospital itself was like a living hell. I couldn't understand why I was born and why I had to live such a hard life. I was filled with anger and resentment towards this world and everyone in it. I used to fall asleep drinking and crying. Then I would wake back up crying, feeling an emptiness that I couldn't understand. Every day was a burden for me, and I wondered how long I had to live like this. I didn't want to wake up in the morning and couldn't get up because my body felt so heavy. I constantly had body aches, as if someone had beaten me up, severe stomach cramps, and was sick for an entire year. On the weekends, I would buy three sushi rolls, go home, and sleep from Saturday afternoon to Monday morning. Sometimes I couldn't even finish the three sushi rolls. One day, I was having tea with a fellow doctor when she told me that some of the other doctors would get together and read the Bible during lunch breaks. Actually, I had gone to church diligently until I was a senior in high school. But God didn't answer my prayer about my father, and church life didn't seem to be helping anything in my life. So I left the church thinking I'd come back someday before I died. What she said was nothing big, but I felt like it was time for me to go back to God. So I started to go to church again. Amazingly, I stopped drinking. My headaches and my stomach aches disappeared, and my life seemed to change. However, the burden of living and the loneliness and emptiness I felt wasn't fixed. In the deepest part of my heart, I kept thinking, what was God's purpose for making me? It would have been better if I weren't ever born. A few years later, my high school friend told me about how Han Maom Church in Chuncheon was a passionate place with many young adult members. Around the same time, my sister asked me to help my nephew, who was a senior in high school, with his faith, and I was reminded of Han Maom Church. I started going to the morning prayer service at Han Maom Church with my nephew. During the morning prayer service, I learned that the resurrection of Jesus was the proof that God gave us in order for us to believe in him. All those years, I just thought of Jesus as one of the four great holy figures in history. I just thought of him as a founder of Christianity. Also, I thought we called Jesus the Son of God because God specially chose one person to become his son. But when I read the book of Isaiah, I was shocked to see that God gave us his son, whom he called the Almighty God. And in the book of Psalms, it was prophesied, He will not abandon me to the grave, and will not let the Holy One see decay. In other words, it was prophesied in the Old Testament that the Son of God will come to this earth as a human being, die, and rise again from the dead. It was historically proven that Jesus died on the cross and rose from the dead on the third day, just like it was prophesied in the Bible. The resurrection was a historical fact. The prophecies in the Old Testament and the historical fact of the resurrection all fell into place, and it became clear to me that the risen Jesus Christ is the Son of God. The resurrection of Jesus was the clear historical proof that the Son of God, who was promised to be sent to this earth, has really come and gone from this world. The resurrection was the proof that Jesus is the Messiah, the one who was prophesied about in the Old Testament, and the one who created me. One day, I watched a scene from Passion of the Christ during church service. Then, during one scene, Jesus and I made eye contact. Jesus was looking at me with his kind, soft eyes as he said to me, Suk, watch carefully. Watch what I endure because I love you. Then, after all the persecution and pain, Jesus was crucified. And he said once again, Do you understand now just how much I love you? I was so shocked. All this time, I thought that Jesus would be furious and rebuke me for what he had to go through because of me when he was crucified. But instead, he was saying, I love you. The Son of God had come down from the throne of heaven, become a human being, and been humiliated and killed by sinners because of my sin. But he didn't blame me or rebuke me. He just said, I'm dying because I love you. At that moment, 
all of God's words that I had heard began running through my mind, and my relationship with God started to fall into place. I thought that God would be very strict and scary. I had tried so hard on my own to endure my destiny, thinking that it was God's will that I had to live like this. I blamed God. I complained to him, asking why he created me and made my life so hard. But I hadn't been understanding him. My creator, God, had created me in his likeness and thought it was very good. And even before he sent me into this world, he had planned to sacrifice his one and only son. My God was a loving father. When he sent me to this darkness, He hoped that I would overcome this world by the power that is given to his children who believe in his son. And he hoped that I would live an abundant life in his love. I had misunderstood God's heart. Rather, I had blamed and judged the one who created me and lived a life that had nothing to do with God. Jesus had to be crucified because I committed the sin of abandoning God in my heart. God, the Creator, died for me because he loved me so much that he wanted to save me. And by rising again from the dead, he became my Lord and my God. When I was lost in the darkness, God had always been watching over me and he had always saved me from all the moments of danger. He had also stopped me from going to see a fortune teller. When I was in pain and feeling lonely and sad, Jesus had felt sorry for me and kept telling me, I love you. I died on the cross to protect you, and I was raised from the dead to become your Lord. The reason why my life was so burdensome wasn't because of my fate or other people or my surroundings. It was because I didn't believe in Jesus, who had fulfilled everything by dying for my sins and being raised from the dead to be my Lord. I was carrying such heavy burdens because I was the Lord in my life. I was a sinner who didn't believe in Jesus. I was a wicked sinner who had driven nails into the heart of the Father God, who had to watch the death of his one and only Son. Father God, I'm a sinner who deserves nothing less than death. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. When I faced the love of the Father God who had sent his only Son to die for my sins, I wailed and repented, and I received Jesus as my Lord and God in my heart. The fact that I am a child of God, the fact that I am more precious than the whole world for God to die for me, and the fact that I'm not alone, but that my Lord is with me all the time made me so happy. I had nothing else to hope for. God's love was enough for me. I never imagined that this would happen in my life. It only took a second for someone's life to be changed. After this, I started to change. I was no longer lonely, and I was happy for no reason. Sometimes, people tell me that I'm becoming younger, prettier, and they ask me what the deal is. I brag that I'm happy because I'm loved by someone who loves me more than his own life. Furthermore, I began to understand why my father had a drinking problem. It was because the pressure that my dad's parents placed on him when he was younger was too heavy. I felt so sorry for my father and was grateful that he supported my siblings and I till we graduated from university. I felt so bad that I had hated him during all this time. So I shared the good news with him. When my father heard the gospel, he received Jesus immediately. A few months later, he passed away. Also, God opened my eyes to see his compassion towards those patients who are in pain. In the past, it didn't matter whether I was interpreting x-rays or examining patients. It was all nothing more than work to me. However, the more I worked, the more I began to empathize with my patients. So I began to share the gospel with them individually. There's one patient that I cannot forget. I performed a procedure on him that helped his bile exit his body. After I sent him off to recover, I felt like I should have shared the gospel with him. So, the next time I met him, 
that's what I did. He said, if Jesus has risen from the dead, we have to believe in Jesus. Then he repented and received Jesus. I got to see him several times after that, and one day he said he wanted to tell me something. He said, Doctor, on that day when I first heard the gospel from you, I was actually planning on doing something right before I met you. I was going to kill myself after being discharged, but that day, I heard the gospel from you, and now I'm saved. He spent every day loving Jesus, and two months later, he passed away peacefully. One of my other patients was a Buddhist her entire life, but she repented and submitted to the risen Lord. Another patient was hospitalized because she drank pesticide, but she received Jesus and passed away after two days. A different patient was in the final stages of cancer, but he cried and repented immediately when he heard the gospel. When I saw those patients being saved, I was happy and proud to be a doctor. My friends used to tell me that I had an easy time establishing my career as a doctor and that I was lucky in that regard. But I always thought that I had the wrong career that my body and mind were in constant agony, and I didn't need a job that made things even worse. I realized, however, that God had opened up doors for me and sent good people along my path. I was able to repent, and I thank God for giving me such an important job. Early one Sunday morning, I got a message that a cancer patient I knew in Seoul and with whom I had shared the gospel had passed away not long ago. She was a newlywed who found out about the cancer when she was pregnant, and her baby was not even a year old. When I arrived in Seoul, her mother was sobbing. I hugged and comforted her. Then I came back to Chuncheon. I couldn't stop crying, and my heart ached. I was scheduled to go to Yangpyeong to visit a cancer patient that day. I thought, how can I see him when I'm crying so much? But I still have to go. Lord, if you stop my tears, I will go. Please help me. I barely managed to call myself before I started driving to Yangpyeong. On the way, I listened to the book of John. When I arrived at the patient's house, I was listening to chapter 21 of the book of John, and it sounded like this. Suk, do you love me? Yes, Lord, I love you. Feed my lambs. My heart wept at the sincere favor that Jesus was asking me. Jesus showed me his love by dying on the cross and rising from the dead for me. That love saved me when I was like a living corpse. Lord, you have made a hopeless person like me become a doctor who saves souls. I will give my life to share your love and feed and take care of your lambs. I love you, Lord. Thank you.